Family and fellow soldiers, I'm the Professor, and this is the Moment of Truth. This morning's briefing may seem a little bit off the beaten path, but listen to the end and I think you'll find that this is something that a lot of black people should at least be aware of. By now, I'm sure that everyone has heard of 23andMe. They're a genomics corporation where users send a mouth swab to them and they generate reports relating to the customer's ancestry and genetic predispositions to health-related topics. At least that's how they bill. On their website, they say, We analyze, compile, and distill your DNA information into reports on your ancestry composition, ancestry detail reports, maternal and paternal haplogroups, Neanderthal ancestry, that's for non-black users, and provide a DNA relatives tool to enable you to connect with relatives who share similar DNA. So basically, that's what the company is about. If you got some relatives out there, maybe you're an adopted child or something trying to reconnect with your birth parents, these guys might be able to help, assuming that these other people in your family tree have actually put their DNA information on file with these guys. Now, it seems to be an altruistic enough motive, and that's fine, but this company's been on shaky ground financially for years now. Even though the company went public in 2021 and saw their value top over $6 billion, they've never actually turned a profit. And it looks like it's gotten a lot worse for them and for the people who over that time have sent them their genetic information. A couple of months ago, 23andMe filed for bankruptcy protection in the United States. Since then, 23andMe has entered into an agreement to be acquired by Regeneron Pharmaceuticals for an estimated $256 million. Now, considering how much this company you would think would have been worth, $256 million sounds almost like a bargain, at least in corporate raider terms. Now, Regeneron is going to acquire nearly all of 23andMe's assets. That's what they've said in the company statement. But the question is, what does assets mean? Because Regeneron has said that they would use the information for drug development. And while 23andMe, of course, does have a privacy policy, it also has language that allows for personal information to be accessed, sold, or transferred if it was, quote, involved in a bankruptcy merger, acquisition, reorganization, or sale of assets. On a side note, this isn't the first time that there's been an issue with 23andMe regarding information getting breached. In 2023, the company experienced a data breach that exposed the genetic data of millions of users. Ultimately, 23andMe would settle a lawsuit alleging that they failed to protect the privacy of their near 7 million customers. Now, whoever the hackers were, they gained access to family trees, birth years, geographic locations, and other information by using customers' old passwords. But 23andMe insists that the data that was stolen didn't include DNA records. Well, for the kind of activities that hackers like to do, getting DNA information would be irrelevant. But still, in this day and age, can you be sure? I have a question. Has the genetic information that's been given to 23andMe ever been truly secure? They claim that they haven't released any customer information to law enforcement, but that doesn't sound like they haven't released any information. It sounds like they got themselves a loophole, just like with their privacy policy. Their website says we will only comply with court orders, subpoenas, search warrants, or other requests that we determine are legally valid. That they determine are legally valid. Quote, to date, we have not released any customer information to law enforcement. Interesting that they choose to word it that way because Facebook and Twitter and other social media networks have also made similar claims in the past about their own policies regarding law enforcement, and yet every one of them has consistently cooperated with the police with simply a request, even going so far as to disable Facebook Live when the cops tell them to. Okay, so why is this in particular the subject of this morning's briefing? It's a reminder to you that this is a case study in how data has become big business. And it doesn't matter if it's your personal data getting sold to data brokers, that is data mining. That's how Facebook and other websites make their money, by the way. Or if it's with genetic information. The more personal, the more specific it is to you, the more valuable it is. And no matter how they may be choosing to word it, the reality happens to be the fact that they've been acquired by this Regeneron company is in fact a sale. And that being the case, that genetic information can be accessed by whoever the world has the company now. And data about your genetics is far more valuable than, say, what your political views are or the websites or web pages that you like to visit. Now, I'm not saying that there's anything inherently wrong with 23andMe or their activities up until this point though they certainly could have chosen a higher class of people to pal around with. And I'm sure that there's probably a number of black people, many listening to me now, who this company has been genuinely helpful to. People looking for relatives or parents and who knows. Maybe they did do some good for some people. 
But when I hear that some company is going to be accessing people's genetic information without those people's permission and without compensating them in any way, allegedly in order to further medicinal research, well, that sounds very familiar. It reminds me of Henrietta Lacks. When it comes to these companies and corporations and outfits calling themselves getting people's genetic information, especially black people's genetic information, doing God knows what with it, we should all think about Henrietta Lacks. For those of you who aren't familiar, she was a black woman who in 1951 went to John Hopkins for a medical issue she was having. Well, it turned out she had cervical cancer, which she died from, though the complete indifference of the white racist medical industry didn't help. John Hopkins harvested cells from Henrietta Lacks' tumor without her permission and without having told her family that they did it either. And those cells became the basis for the first immortal human cell line. Variations on her cells have been used in research all over the world. What John Hopkins did remained a secret until the 1970s. Keep in mind, John Hopkins is arguably the most prestigious hospital on earth. And yet, in this case, they operated no differently than some back alley shop somewhere in Tijuana. And speaking of prestige, the white media definitely made 23andMe quite prestigious. These guys were just a bunch of altruistic sorts selflessly just trying to help people, but at the end of the day, they do have a for-profit mission. Because although 23andMe didn't tell their users much about it, one of their past ventures that failed was their attempt to try to move their trove of data into drug development. So Regeneron's not the only company that decided that 23andMe's massive database of genetic information would be good for drug development. 23andMe had already attempted it themselves previously. A lot of people constantly tell us that we're entering some new world. But when you see things like this, it looks a hell of a lot like the old one. I think about things like the enormous infant mortality rate that white supremacy has inflicted on us. Do you put it past those reprobates to be doing God knows what with those black babies' genes? Does anyone seriously believe that the same medical establishment that illegally or at the very least blatantly unethically stole Henrietta Lacks' genetic information and used it to benefit themselves has somehow discovered religion in the last 50 years and that they no longer operate that way? And don't get me started when it comes to black people, especially young black people, and organ harvesting. These white supremacists hate black people at the same time they can't deny the fact that black genes are the most dynamic genes and have the most genetic information. Unlike recessive genes, which by their very definition are incomplete. When it comes time for these guys to be doing all kinds of dirt, they always make sure to cloak their mendacity behind words about the greater good. Everything they're doing is for the greater good. But inevitably, we always find out the only good they were operating in was their own. This country has always had a depraved indifference for human life where black people and medicine is concerned. And when it comes to the subject of how the information about a black person's genes is handled, we have every right to be suspicious and concerned. Remember, it was Elon Musk's little country of apartheid South Africa that actually came up with bioweapons specifically meant to target black people. Whenever you have this holy grail of information being opened up to these white supremacists, they're not just sitting there thinking, oh, let's come up with some sort of new drugs because all the time we hear that, well, black people need different medications or that there's something wrong with black people's genes that makes it where these medications wouldn't work for them when the reality is these white supremacists are using our genes in order to try to solve their own medical problems. Medicine has always been one of the primary battlefields the white supremacy has used to attack black people as a group. Because through the medical field, you're able to deny black people life-saving health care, or you're able to tell black people we're doing all sorts of things for you when they're doing nothing at all. I know that this is a tough or at the very least difficult subject to handle, mainly because 23andMe has been around for a couple of decades now. And truth be told, there wasn't anything up until this point to make it where you look and say, you know what, we shouldn't have anything to do with these guys at all. And besides... Genetic information can be helpful in the right hands to help people find out questions about ancestry, putting back together severed family lines, that kind of thing. But my question happens to be, whose hands is that information in? Were 23andMe started by black people, I seriously doubt that they would have gotten the kind of money that they got to start up with or gotten all of those celebrity endorsements. And certainly wouldn't have been allowed to be going into bankruptcy court and saying, oh, let us sell ourselves to somebody else. They would have been told, no, you're going to give all this away. A company that has one of, if not the largest database of individual genetic users' information, you would think that if these guys were basically so concerned about users' privacy that they would be making a big stink telling everybody, hey, here's a period of time where everybody should be applying to us whether or not you want for us to delete your information or otherwise get rid of it. Wouldn't that be something you would think that these guys would be publicizing? 
but they're not. You have a lot of people, many of them black, who trusted these guys with their genetic code. And what they're showing is that at the end of the day, the only code they care about is being on code with each other. Good day, and be one. I'd like to take a moment to mention some of our contributors. Andrew Lewis, Mark Singleton, Ronald Scott, Samora Morris, and Saifa Chahuri. Salute to them and thank you to everyone for listening, liking, and sharing this message. Black Empowerment only exists because of you.